Today I'm going to work on a killed by GUI for first person shooter games. So if one player kills another player, we're going to get a little message saying who did what. Let's try it out. Player 2 is killed by player 1. Bruh. Alright, let's go ahead and get started on that. First thing you're going to need is a weapon. You have to implement creator tags on your weapon. A lot of Roblox weapons already have it. But let's go ahead and do this with a simple pistol from one of my other videos. I'll put this link in the description. This will be green. It says get if you don't have it. Go ahead and click that. Then you'll have it in Roblox Studio. Go ahead and pull up Roblox Studio. Maybe open up a game. There we go. Nice fresh world. I'll go to my toolbox. Go to my models. And then simple gun, I think I called it. Simple gun. There it is. And this has no frills. Very, very simple gun. Two scripts. Yep. And you could watch those scripts on a video if you want. But there's my simple gun. So what we're going to do is we're going to put creator tags in here so we know who killed who. And we can also do a kills death leaderboard. I'll add the kills to the leaderboard in this video. The creator tag pattern is a very popular way in Roblox to keep track of who killed who. So we can use something from Roblox to get that code, right? Shorten our journey a little bit. Let's go to our toolbox and then I'm going to search for the sword created by Roblox. This is the one. There we go. And hit OK. Yep, it's OK. We have scripts. We're going to search for the tag stuff in here. We're going to do a Control Shift. F, and that's going to be a global search in our workspace. And then we'll look for tag hume. All right? It's called tag humanoid. It is in the classic sword. There we go. And these two functions, I'm going to close this. These two functions are what we need. Right? So we're going to put a tag on the humanoid that we're hurting. And that way, if they die, we're going to get the player's name. It's going to be in that tag. Let's copy that code. Let's go to our pistol damage script. So whatever weapon you're using, look for where they do take damage, right? And you're going to get the humanoid that you're damaging. That's convenient. That's what we need. Let's add our two functions. There we go. I don't like to have caps in my, in my code for function names. So I'm going to make that a lowercase t and a lowercase u. You are more than welcome to keep it the same if you want. This debris is going to cause a problem. We had that. It must have been a variable name uh, in the Roblox sword. I just have to add game dot debris. And this is going to get rid of the tag after two seconds. So the tag is only going to be valid for a very short period of time. If they die within that time, we are going to get the player name in that tag. That's how we're going to credit people who kill something. All right. So let's go down to our take damage. Right here, we're going to have the humanoid that we're damaging. We typically get the player. We always have the player in the server side script of a weapon because it's fired by a remote event or a remote function. So we can get our player. I'm going to do untag humanoid because I'm going to first remove any tags that other players did so they don't get credit. And then I'm going to do tag humanoid so that I get credit. I'm going to pass the humanoid I'm hurting and the player that did the hurting, right? That's going to populate that information in our tag. We're going to use that to credit our kill. Cool. Now I'm going to add a leaderboard to server script service to keep track of my kills. And I'm also going to use it to capture my tag information. Let's go to server script service, hit the plus script. I'm going to call this leaderboard. I click that. There we go. Leaderboard. And we'll get rid of that print statement. Let's add a function. Local function add board. Player will get passed in and we'll get a variable for the board. There we go. Local board instance.new. This can be a folder or a model. I'll pick folder. Second argument is going to be the parent, which is the player. So the board needs to have a name and it needs to be leader stats spelled just like that. And I'm going to put a metric on that board. It's going to be kills local kills equals instance dot new in value. And the parent is going to be the board. 
kills.name is going to be what shows up on your leaderboard in the game. So I'll just make this kills with a capital K. Now we'll get the game player service, capture the player added event, connect that to a function. Player will be the argument because it's the player added event. And I'll do the add board here, passing in the player. Let's go ahead and try that out and see if we have a leaderboard. Let's go to view output just to make sure we don't have any errors. No errors, kills zero. Great. Now let's write some code to get the tag information on the death of a player. So let's turn this off here. I'll go to leaderboard and in my player added, right? When a, when a player's added to the game, let me go ahead and open that up. I want to get a character added event. So I'll get the player dot character added. So every time the character is, is added to the game, this is going to connect. So even on respawns, we're going to have this function with a char getting passed in. We're going to have the character from that char. We're going to get the humanoid from the char. Char, wait for child, humanoid. Once we get the humanoid, the hum, we're going to get the died event, right? Died. Connect that to another function, right? And that is going to look for the tag on the humanoid that just died. So we have our died, we have our tag, ah, but the character could have died without a tag. So let's do the humanoid find first child and it's called creator, right? So you can go back into your sword script or your pistol script. You'll notice that that's what we named our tag. All right, so if the tag exists and the tag has a value, then we can credit someone for the kill. I am going to get the name of the enemy player, right? From the tag value. And then I'm going to get the enemy player. We all have leaderboards. We're going to increase the leader stats for the kills. Remember it was capital K dot value by one. So we'll do a plus equals one. That's going to take the old value and increase it by one. So that just incremented our kills. Now we have a kills leaderboard that works. Let's go to our test and get two players in there and try it out. All right, so my test server starting up. I'll go ahead and give it some more room here. You can kind of see it, right? There is a gun over here. Let's grab that gun. Cool. Look at that, I got a credit for the kill. Watch this, I could still do it with my sword too because it's using the same pattern. Two kills. So it's gonna work with different weapons. That's why it's good to have a consistent pattern. So now let's get our server side to send a message to a GUI that's gonna display who killed who. We have all the information. Let's hit the cleanup on our test server. Yeah, leave it. And I'm going to go to my player added event. And I'm just going to do a fire remote event here. Let me put a note. I'm going to fire a remote event to client, right? To display to all clients. Let's do it to all clients. To all clients. How do we do that? First thing we're going to need to do is go to replicated storage, hit the plus, add a remote event. So the remote event is used to talk between the client and the server. I'm going to call this killed by RE. That's our killed by remote event. So we'll go to the top of our leaderboard and Let's get a variable for replicated storage. Game get service. Replicated storage. We're going to get a killed by RE. Killed by RE. From replicated storage. Wait for child. That's what we need. Killed by RE. And you know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to put 
a random number generator in there to put a little delay in case a couple of people get killed at the same time. That way we don't have our our labels overwriting each other exactly and then we can only see one person dying right I didn't want to do a queue service that would take too long so this is going to be a simple solution just put a little random number generator in there then when we get down here we're going to get our killed by RE fire all clients if you want everybody to see the kill obviously just fire a client if you want to see one person to see the kill all right, but I'm going to do it for everybody. And then I'm going to pass in both the player and the enemy player. All right, so we're going to say player or such and such was killed by enemy player. Cool. But we want to have a little bit of random time in between our firing of events um, between multiple kills. So we don't care if everybody gets the event at the same time. But if like three people get killed at exactly the same time, we want this to fire slightly different. So I'm going to do a wait random. I'll do a next number just between like one and 0.8 seconds, right? Just so we have a little bit of displacement of our UI stuff. All right, that's pretty cool. Now we can go ahead and make our GUI. Let's select our place right here, and then I'm going to go down to Starter GUI, hit the plus, Screen GUI, hit the plus, Text Label. There we go. That's what's going to have our message on there. Let's just change the anchor point to 0.5 and 0.5. That anchors our label in the center to the screen. Then I'm going to go down to Background Transparency. I'm going to make that one. Right, I just want to see the words. I'll go to, oh, name. Let's change the name. Let's call this killed by LBL, killed by label. Position, I want to center it. I'll do 0.5, so 50% of the X on the scale, zero pixel offset, 50% of the Y on scale, which is 0.5, zero pixel offset. Now it's centered. And because the anchor point's in the middle, if I change the size, it's still going to be centered. I think I'm going to make this pixels. I'm going to keep it pixels. I'll do 250 pixels on the X, or maybe 75 pixels on the Y. That makes it a little bigger. Can't really see it, though. I'm going to go to my font since I'm here. I'm going to change that to bangers because I like that font. So change it to whatever you want. And then text. We're going to have some sort of text message, right? It's going to be like... Player one, player one, uh, killed player two. Well, we're going to do that with code, so it doesn't matter. You don't have to change anything there, but I want to kind of look to see what it looks like. Let's go to our text color, maybe make it bright, like yellow. Cool. I'm going to make it text scaled so that it's bigger. And then text stroke transparency, I'll make that zero. So I get a little outline around my my letters. Let's make this killed by label invisible until we need it. So I'm going to scroll up for visible, uncheck it. I'm going to go to my screen GUI, hit the plus, add a local script, right? And my local script is going to be called uh, display killed MSG. All righty. So I have that on the same level as my label, and you're going to see why in a second. So I need my replicated storage local, I'll call it RS, equals game get service replicated storage. I need a remote event, my killed by a remote event. I'll make a variable for that. Killed by RE. It is in replicated storage, RS, colon, wait for child, killed by RE. I need my tween service, local, I'll call that TS. And let's see, game, get service, tween service. I need a T, tween service. I need some tween info. I'm just going to do it on time. I'll call that TI for tween info. There we go, dot new. I'm not going to do anything with easing style and easing direction. I'm just going to make this like four seconds, All right? The time of the tween. And I'm going to actually 
clone my killed by label in case like people get killed all at once, like in an explosion, right? So we're, we might need more of these than just that one we created. So I'll do a killed by LBL temp for template script dot parent down to let's actually do colon wait for child killed by label. I'll make a function local function call that display killed by LBL. We're going to get our killed player and then we're going to get the enemy player. All right? And then I want to get my killed by LBL, but I'm not going to just reference it. I'm going to get the template and then clone it. All right? And I'll need a parent for that killed by label. So killed by label dot parent is actually going to be the script dot parent. Right? Because we're going to clone this here on the same level, the script.parent will also be the screen GUI. And what else am I going to do? Oh, I need to make it visible, right? Killed by label. We made it invisible. So we're going to have to make it visible when we need it. And then we're going to change the text, right? Killed by label text. We're going to have our killed by the killed player, such and such dot name string concatenator was killed by space string concatenator e player dot name all right we can make this a little bigger should we put it on a new line no that'll work there we go so that's the message the killed player was killed by the enemy player that's going to display on our killed by label then you know what? Let's hold it for a little bit. Let's hold it for a second so they could read it. And then I'm going to play my tween. So I need to create a tween. Local tween, tween service, create, create. And I want to create the tween on the killed by label. I want to use the tween info for the time. And then I'm going to, that's probably more than I need. I'm going to tween on position, P-O-S. There we go, position. We're going to use a udim 2new for the position. Dot five, that's, we're going to keep it 50% on the X on the scale, zero pixel offset, but we're going to make the next number negative 0.5 in the Y. That's actually up above the screen. So it's going to slide up above the screen, zero pixel offset. That is a little bit big. I think I'll move this down to the next line. There we go. You can keep it all on one line. You know what? We could probably fit that on one line. That's nah, fine. All right, I just want you to be able to see it in case you're copying it. All right, then we'll get the tween and play it. All right, and then we want to wait till it's done before we move on. So I'm going to say tween dot completed wait right so when the tween finishes and you no longer can see it it's above the screen we'll do the killed by label and destroy it because remember it was just a clone it wasn't the it wasn't the original remember we have our killed by remote event we'll do an on client event we'll capture that connect the display killed by label get rid of those two extra parentheses we only want the function name so when we capture that event we're going to call this we're going to clone our label and it's going to it's going to go up above uh showing who died it's going to like become visible and then show who died let's try it out let's go to test two players hit the start all right so let's grab the gun and shoot our player Player two is killed by player one. That's pretty cool. And it should work with any weapon that has a creator tag pattern. So the sword, it should still work. Player two is killed by player one. That's pretty awesome. Pretty useful too. I will see you in the next video.